Hey guys, extremely excited to be here today with you. What I'm going to show you today is to how to replace a broken screen on a Lumia 950. I'm not going to tell you how it happened, which really doesn't matter, but what you can you can see the damage came on the lowest corner on the right hand side over here. You can even see the damage from a fall uh, on, on the plastic on the back cover here. Uh, the replacement is fairly simple. It's much more simple than it was or it used to be on the Lumia 930. I actually do have a couple of these. Um, so this is my second Lumia 950. I've never replaced the screen on this. Just ended up picking up the completely new handset. So what's going to happen next is I'll show you what, what tools you'll need. A um, couple, of, couple of words about when you order a replacement screen. Be careful where you order this from. This is what I got and this is the way it was packaged. Luckily it was delivered unbroken and it is brand new. It does have a Microsoft logo here at the top. So if we look visually, it's pretty much an identical screen uh, with the screen protector. Um, we will have to migrate certain components from the back of this phone uh, or from the back of the screen onto here, which will include the fiber, it'll include the camera and all that good stuff. And we'll connect it, test to make sure that it works, and we'll turn on the phone to make sure that it works. And then we're gonna go ahead and reassemble everything back together. Just a couple of words of caution. Caution, be very careful with these connectors. They're very fragile, so don't rip anything apart. And we're gonna keep the cover on until we're done with the project. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. You will need a couple of simple tools, just a couple of pry-up tools here, and just be sure that you have a screwdriver set, um, which you really need just the smallest Phillips for it. Another thing is that if you look in the back here, and I'm going to open it up, and you open this up by pressing in the middle of the back cover and then prying it open at the bottom, just like that. Don't be afraid to break it, it's bendable. So, move that aside. You do have 13 screws all around, almost all of them on the perimeter, except a couple of them um, sort of in the center here around the battery uh, in order to pull the back cover off of it. Keep in mind, those screws are a little bit different in size, so you have to make sure that you reassemble. When you reassemble, you put them in the right in their respective positions. So what I'm gonna use for that is I'm gonna use the dual-sided, uh, double-sided piece of tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a strip and place it over here on the table. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use that to place all the screws we take out. And we're gonna do this in order to where, where, when we reassemble everything, we'll remember where to put them back. I don't know, I've actually never seen anyone do this. You might find your own solution or look for another one, but this is just kind of what I think is gonna be the most reasonable solution for this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna pull out the battery and set that aside as well have it here, sort of have everything in order. All right guys, so you can actually see a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and take out these screws here. And we might have to use tweezers to get them out of here because sometimes they're mounted pretty tightly. So we're gonna use the tape here and it's going to look like this. So what you see right there is the screw. So I'm gonna place them on the perimeter of the double-sided adhesive to make sure we remember which screw goes where. So as you can see now, the, all the screws are out, so we're gonna proceed with the removal of the frame. Uh, just take a look at the screws. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking to create a perimeter full of screws on the double adhesive to, to make sure that you remember where, you, where to put them back when you reassemble everything, so that's important. So what we're doing is we're going to neatly, without pulling on anything, take off the back cover, right? This is replaceable and this is going to go back on there without without any further modifications to this. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. All right. Now, another thing that we have here is we have the logic board here. And before we take the logic board, we have to make sure that we disconnect every single connector on here. And we're going to use the little pry up tool to do that. And be very careful when you do that. Like I said, they're very fragile. 
one more. And to complete the removal of all connectors, there is one more that's right over here that's also connected to the logic board. And we unsnap that and just be careful when you do so. So this should come out really easily. And then we have the camera here. The camera comes off with the logic board. So that's not something we have to worry about. And so you have the logic board along with the camera. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it down to make sure no dust will go on it. So do that. So this is how it comes off. This is how you set it down. You can just set it on top of the frame. Just be careful not to scratch the camera lens. All right, so what we ultimately have is we have our old original screen with a couple of things to move on to the new one. Let's go ahead and compare and see what they look like. So we'll have this connector, this connector. So this entire module at the top right needs to migrate here along with the vibrate here. Okay, so we're gonna use the tweezers to do that. Now, as you're doing it, you wanna make sure that you're careful enough. There's a layer of adhesive underneath. So when you do this, be careful not to break it. And what we're going to do is we're going to accurately take it out. And this is what, this is the element of interest that we're going to put back in here, okay? So let's go ahead and flip it upside down. This already comes with a layer of adhesive, so all we have to do is place it in there and press it down. And it's already sticking in place, okay? So, so this part is done. Now, let's go ahead and worry about all this stuff on here on this end. And this metal clip needs to come out because that's what's actually holding it in place. Everything else is already disconnected. So what we're going to do here is we're going to insert this in here and disconnect the clip. And it comes right out, okay? Might be a little hard to do, but don't be scared. Again, set it aside next to it so you remember how to mount it. All right, now this is going to be the worst part of the experiment, rather not an experiment. All of this stuff is kind of glued onto the screen. So I'm gonna move this to the side and we're gonna focus on this right here. Extremely slow, extremely cautious because this is very, very easy to break. And if you break it, you will end up ordering a replacement, okay? Uh, so we do have a couple of things also. So this will come out fairly easily, okay? Right, so again, that's gonna be right there with the metal board over it. And the way you address this piece over here, slowly using your fingers, grab it at the top and anchor on the bottom, but don't pull too hard because if you do, you might be risking tearing off the whole thing off the board, okay? So make sure you don't do that. Once you pry it open far enough, you can continue slowly pulling on it, extremely slowly, don't rip anything apart. These parts are actually somewhat costly. So you wanna make sure you don't damage anything. Plus it's a hassle. If you do tear it off, you do have to um, you do have to order a new one. That's going to take some time to arrive, so you might be phoneless for for that time. So this is already disconnected. So we're slowly continuing to just watch that, and there it is. Okay. Now, of course, it's extremely hard to inspect this as you're looking at it, whether you broke anything or not, but we will find out once we test it. Um, upon the visual inspection, it doesn't look like anything is broken, so we're just gonna set this over here, right? Okay, so we do have a couple more things to migrate. Let's go ahead and compare. So we do have our speaker here, okay? Um, this does have a little layer of adhesive that needs to come out. So we're gonna try to get this out very neatly and throw it away. It may not be visible very well on your screen, but right there, there's a little notch. Insert the pry up tool under and very slowly, it will eventually come out. It does have contacts that are very easy to break. It's gonna take me just a second to pull it back in place there and not break it. There you go, this is where it goes, right in the center. Be careful, do not touch these. They're each attached, they have a connection, permanent connection to the board inside of it, and also they have 
a little tiny little wire tiny little wire that uh, that's there so be very careful okay so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to so unfortunately this is really not sticky we're gonna test it and if it, everything works and we don't need to replace this assembly here this um, flex cable uh, little board then we're just gonna leave everything as it is otherwise we're gonna have to have to use some um, double-sided adhesive tape probably not the one that I showed you in the beginning of this video but uh, a more a more sturdy one so if you remember the next thing that goes in there is going your is your camera that's gonna go right at the top here and it just sits right in there there's no physical attachment of any kind at this point in time however we're gonna place that metal clip around it to make sure that it mounts well so the goal here is to make sure that you Reassemble this piece first on the left. All, all it is, it's in reverse order, but make sure that the bracket on the right goes outside of the plastic piece there. It's very hard to show it on the video, but if you slightly press down and it, it actually clips into place and it also holds the speaker connector module, the three and a half millimeter jack. So hopefully now that everything is in place here on this end, okay, we are going to proceed and install the logic board back. Okay, that includes the camera as well. And the camera is gonna be facing upwards if you remember now you do have a connector here that gets in the way so I'm gonna set this down here and I'm going to use the little pry up tool and we're going to go ahead and lift it up slightly and that may take a second to manipulate but this is how it's supposed to work and we're gonna realign it and make sure the camera sits in the place and this is where everything goes now there are a couple of landmarks you can use to verify what you're doing so if you actually look at the bottom portion here the connector here should sit right in this groove here it should be flush let's take a look and see how we did at the top it looks like we're a little off on the side here and make sure that that's aligned make sure there's no strain so that that's where it snaps into place now you have all these connectors to connect okay make sure everything is even again at the top and on the bottom and all you have to do now is carefully find the right place by looking at the side and see if it snaps into place. I would start with the top connector here and align it the way it's supposed to be. It may not seem easy, but it's completely doable. Then we have that little one here that I would go in next. So just make sure you don't pull on anything. And there you go, it finds its place there, okay? We got one more large one here. So we're basically following the reverse of the original disassembly procedure. Once you find the right place, it just clicks into place. And again, don't pull on anything because it's extremely easy to break this stuff. Now, now, that everything is in place just make sure that it's nice and flush nothing is really doesn't have a whole lot of play anyway we're gonna install the logic board cover also known as this right here and we just carefully press it down a little bit and make sure your connector is there so insert it the right way and the only trick with this is that if anything is not aligned, you have to kind of hold it together. So let's go ahead and use the plastic piece. Do you know that this button here is the turn on button? So we're gonna press it and it vibrates, which is a good sign. Let's see if I have anything displaying on the screen. Now it will be a problem if it doesn't, because in that case, assuming that the screen is a working screen, which in this case it worked, make sure that it turns on and doesn't have any glitches because if you screw up the connections on the inside there's a possibility your device will freeze while you're turning it on so let's go ahead and just wait until it fully comes on and we'll check to make sure the touchscreen is functional and in that case we can go ahead and put back all the screws take off the screen protector put on the back cover and we're all set And there you go. And the screen is actually responding to touch, which is which is excellent. This is perfect. So while this is still on, I'm gonna set it down like this. And while all the connections are being made, 
we are going to start replacing the screws here. Again, remember the order and make sure that everything goes back where it's supposed to be. And if you remember, the phone was facing to the left with the camera, so... Alright guys, so now that all the screws have been placed, let's go ahead and put on the back cover so it's easier to operate the side buttons here and make sure everything snaps into place. Alright guys, so this is probably the most pleasant moment where you can pull up or pull off the protective cover here. And I'm extremely excited because this is actually working. It's responding to touch. I have checked to make sure that it makes phone calls and you can actually hear people conversing with you, which is which is pretty which is pretty amazing. So one of the other things you can do if your camera cover module is pretty scratched up over here, just the plastic cover here with the, with the camera cover. You can replace that as well. You don't really have to disassemble the entire phone. You can just take off the back cover and pry up this over here very neatly and carefully and just replace it with a new one. I will certainly order a new back cover for it because this one is slightly scratched because I, I like my phone to be neat. And this is pretty much it. So this is a video for replacement of the screen on a Lumia 950. You make sure you follow these instructions. Don't tighten, don't over tighten the screws because this is not a car, it's not a motorcycle. And as always, thank you for watching. I love making these videos and I hope you find it useful or at least some of you because the market share of Microsoft is extremely small nowadays. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel.